Hello, my name is Tom Martin, and I'm one of the trainers here at TechScan, and today we're going to go over qualitative data analysis. Qualitative data analysis consists of the following icons, 2D and 2D contours, 3D, flip, averages 1 and averages 2, center of force and center of force trajectory, the peak pressure icon, the multi-peak icon, peak stance averaging, integral, and percentages. So now what we'll do is we'll go into the software and we'll review each one of these. So the first icon we're going to look at is the 2D icon. Now the 2D icon is the actual raw output of the sensor. So you can see each one of the sensing cells is represented by an individual square. So what you can do is you can actually find the exact sensing cell by placing your cursor over that area. And then I'll have you look down this row right here. So when I put my cursor over there, you can see that it's row and column 50 and 12. It actually tells you the distance, so 25.7 centimeters versus 6.4 centimeters. And the load on that cell is 43 PSI. So you can go to any location, any cell, and in this area right here, you can get that information. The next view, which is the default view, is the 2D contour. And what that is, is that's a self-smoothing program algorithm, which will get rid of those rough corners and make the sensing cells look more like uh, the natural foot. So now everything's been smoothed out, and you can see the landmarks a little bit better. You can still take your cursor and find the row and columns down here, um, but, you know, you won't know exactly where the cells are. Um, it will tell you in there, but uh, the individual cells will be harder to pinpoint. The three-dimensional view takes the feet and, again, puts it in a 3D view. And what you can do is you can take your cursor and you can adjust the plane and the angle at which you can view the feet. What you can do, you can also play it in this view as well. The flip columns button will take the foot image and flip it. So you can still see it's the left foot and the right foot, but what it's done is it's taken it and it's changed the perspective. So before the view was from the patient's perspective, looking down at their feet. So if they could look through their feet, this is what the pressures would look like. When we click on the, the flip icon, this would be more like if you were looking up at the feet, um, basically if they were standing on a glass box and you were able to look up. So uh, that's what the flips column does, is it basically reverses the view of the foot. <clears throat> now what we're going to look at is the average one and average two feature. Now what average one does is it averages the whole sensing, the whole sensor. So even dead zones, you'll notice there's a dead zone here and a dead zone there where there isn't any pressure. When I click on average one, it'll average every sensing cell and it'll fill in those dead spaces. Now this is good if you do have a sensor that happens to get a whole row or column of dropout where you get no pressure. So you can kind of have, a, have the system guess or calculate what the pressures might have been in that area. <coughs> Averaging two, however, will only average active sensing cells. So when I click on the average two, you can still see it averages everything and smooths out those lines, but it only averages active sensing cells. Next, we're going to look at the center of force and the center of force trajectory lines. Now, what the center of force does is it shows you basically the balancing points. So uh, right now, we're in what we call peak mode. 
So it's showing you the average center of force for this whole foot strike. So you can see that what you look for is to see how well they match up, if they're kind of in the same location. What you can also do is you can track the center of force by taking the peak off and getting to a foot strike for each. Okay, so we'll look at stance number three of each foot, take peak off, and we'll see if the center of force moves at the same pace on each foot. So you can see the foot on the left, the center of force is more is moving up the foot a lot more quicker than the one on the right. Okay. What you also have is you have the center of force trajectory line where you can see the, the path that it's taken. So on this foot strike, if we go back, we can look at the path. We can see if the subject supinates or pronates. So you can see the foot on the left kind of goes out to the lateral side and then kind of curves to the medial side where the foot on the right is more of a, a straight line. Okay. So we can also look at this in peak mode as well. So you can compare each center of force for each foot strike to see if there's any similarities or differences. The next icon is called peak stance averaging. And what it does is when the subject's in peak mode, each foot strike is shown as a stance. So right here is stance one of seven. So on the left foot, we took seven foot strikes. Same thing on the right foot, stance is one through seven. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll look at peak stance averaging, and what that does is it averages each one of these stances. Or what you can do is you can select what stances you want to average, create an average image. So the default is to disclude the first stance and the last stance because usually those aren't very good recordings because usually that's when the subject is starting and stopping. So we'll keep the middle stances. And now what it's created is an average stance of two through six and the pressure distributions for those averages. Now we'll click on the left foot and do the same thing. Do an average. And now you can look at the average pressure distribution and the average center of force trajectory line. <clears throat> the next icon is called uh, multi-peak. So what I'm going to do is you're able to look at each foot strike at one time. So I'm going to click on the multi-peak and we're going to look at the left foot. <clears throat> so we took seven foot strikes so now we can look at all of them at once. And just by clicking the right arrow or the left arrow, you can see it'll only show six at a time. But if I click my right arrow, now I can look at number seven of seven. <clears throat> so what you look for here is you look for similarities in the center of force trajectory lines. You look for the location of the peak pressures represented by this black box. Are they all in the same location or are they in different locations? And also what it shows you in the panes box is what that peak pressure is. So right now over the hallux is 76 PSI, and that's the peak pressure. And what you do here is you throw out the ones that aren't like the rest. So number two looks a little, it looks different. Number four looks a little different, so we throw those out. And now when we go back to peak averaging, we'll say, all right, well, instead of averaging two through six, maybe I just want to average one, three, five, and six. So if I go to averaging, click on select stance, and then you say, all right, well, we wanted to throw out two, four, and seven. So now this is a better representation of the foot strikes, so we just wanted to average those. Okay. 
So now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at integral impulse. Okay. So what integral impulse does is it takes into consideration timing as well as force. So if we look at the color legend right now, it's in PSI. But if we click on integral impulse, it'll change. <clears throat> so now it's in pounds by seconds. So what this is showing you is the areas that the subject spends the most time on. So you can see that the subject spends a lot of time on the heel as well as the hallux. <laughs> now what we're going to look at is the percentage of force. So I'm going to click on the percentage icon. And what you can see is how much, pre how much force distribution uh, with the foot in the rear foot and the forefoot. So you can see about 60-40 on the left foot and about 55-45 on the right foot. Okay, uh, that will wrap up our uh, discussion today on qualitative analysis. If you have any questions, please give us a call.